call this meeting to order at 7 p.m. Could I have a motion to adopt the agenda, please? Councillor Cutler. Question? Moved by Councillor Cutler that the agenda be accepted as presented. All in favor? Approved. Regular minutes from June 10th, 2024. Can I have a motion to accept? Councillor Meister, any questions, errors, omissions? Question, please. Moved by Councillor Meister that the regular meeting minutes of June 10th, 2024 be accepted as presented. All in favor? Approved. Action items. Number one, delegation response, Station Association for Claire's Home and Area. A yeah, so uh, the station um, came to council for a delegation at the last council meeting um, and reviewed uh, some of the work that they've done, uh, they have been doing in the town or the groups that they coordinate with, uh, some of the uh, services that they provide, and um, mentioned their intention to pull out of, uh, I guess, uh, facilitator of services, um, uh, coordinator of, of services uh, in Claire's home. They mentioned that the service groups that are uh, currently um, providing services here will continue to do so, um, but that they would no longer be uh, in working out of Claire's home. And uh, they currently operate down at Mackin Hall and in, in indicated they wouldn't be overseeing that building um, and coordinating, again, coordinating services through there. And so they uh, requested that the town step in and uh, oversee everything. I truly don't understand what they want us to do. They mentioned in here they want to come explain it to council about what they want to do. They what did. They what did. they want us to do. But they did come and explain it to us. No, they explained that they were dropping out and said that the town should take over overseeing that facility and the groups that are in it. Yeah. So would that mean like pay the power bill and all that kind of stuff would fall back on the town? I think one of the biggest things they wanted was some kind of supervision of organizing timelines and like they talked about FCSS being coordinated with it and those types of things but we know FCSS is kind of stretched as far as they can go I just don't know where the town can facilitate the organization of the four programs or five programs that are there I just don't know where we'd have a role with doing that exactly I don't mind. I mean, we can cover the rent, I guess, until something else, other thing comes out. Or That's what I mean. I don't mind providing Mac and Hall for, I mean, they, they love Mac and Hall. They explain to us that it's a great place and they feel like home and those types of things. But around the collaboration, around the programs that are ran there, that's, that's a whole other ball of wax. I don't think we're capable of doing it. I didn't get the impression that's even what they were asking. They just kind of wanted someone to manage the building, but maybe I missed it. I was under the impression that they just wanted the financial con contribution from the town as well to pay for right. the bills. So right. that's, that's how I understood, understood their conversation. They would still like to operate there with no cost to them, but us but they're to not. Back over. But they're not overseeing the programs anymore. Well, no, but it also says that they uh, streamlined it to have non nominal input with minimal coordination and at nominal cost. So, so what yeah. are the, these groups just going to show up? Do we have any clarification from admin? Yeah, I was going to say, could admin get some clarification for us what the yep. ask is? Yeah, I, I believe the ask is that they're, they're stepping away. They have a lease uh, with the town. They had a two-year lease that has actually now expired. And so I, I think they were the, uh, the holders of that space, the managers of that space. Um, and so operationally, we would have to look at what's involved with that, with them mm -hmm. stepping out, how much kind of cleaning and maintenance were involved. Mm -hmm. We, we um, by and large, uh, give this building, or let them use this building free, mm -hmm. for free. Uh, so there's no, uh, 
uh, they, yeah, we're not we're not losing any money by not we're not there's not a lack of rent to collect. I guess is what I'm saying, um, and uh, we cover the utilities. The town rather covers the utilities. Um, so I, th my thoughts are, and we can connect with them, um, but they just wanted to make sure that the existing groups, um, now that they're stepping away, the lease was with them, that the existing groups will be able to uh, continue to use the space uh, for no cost. And then as well, what did their role in maintaining the, the building look like? I don't exactly know. That's a question we'd have to ask them. But I think they're passing that off to us. Um, I don't think there's a lot of maintenance involved, probably a lot of uh, tidy up and clean up after the events. Uh, I suspect the groups did that a lot themselves. So, Councillor Cutler. So I know we gave it to them to, like, pretty much, they, but they kept up. They did a bunch of maintenance and a bunch of repairs on the building when they first moved in to, to make it what they wanted, I believe, right? Uh, I do hesitate. I, I don't want to start an argument, but I do hesitate the, the word free or all these programs have funding. I mean, if we start giving away buildings for fees, who's gonna come ask for more free spaces? So, but I, I mean, the programs are great. I just don't know how this looks. Um, I mean, between the five organizations, if they can pay the bill, or I don't know. It, it's just, I worry about if we start handing out free building space, then what's gonna happen next? Or, or maybe they just do like a get together, do a Mac and user group. Oh, I'm sorry, forgot we're on. Uh, maybe if they get together and do a Mac and user group, I mean, we can bridge this for a period of time, but I agree with you. I, I don't know if it's uh, free permanent is probably not very tenable, I don't think, forever. Mm -hmm. To come up with a basic agreement of what was done previously, um, just so it's not an extra barrier to public works, um, I don't see as any issue if they continue providing the services as before. It's just a matter of nailing out the who and the what and just sign something off formally. But yeah. So that's, I want that's how I get back to them and get that clarification. Yeah, it's clearly defined who's going to be in there because if the station isn't coordinating these programs, who, who else is going to show up you know, and help themselves? Yep. So we'll refer that to administration to get more cl clarification. Number two, correspondence, Honorable Rick MacGyver. Do we need a motion for that? Yes. Okay. Councillor Zimmer. Question. Moved by Councillor Zimmer to refer this matter to administration to collect more information. All in favor? Approved. Okay, on to number two, correspondence by Rick MacGyver, Minister of Municipal Affairs, Canada Community Building Fund. Abe? So just receiving some information from Municipal Affairs at the CCBF, Canada Community Building Fund, um, they're currently in talks, the province is currently in talks with uh, the federal government uh, for a 10-year agreement on that fund. Uh, and I guess a heads up that because they're in negotiations, those uh, funding announcements for 2024 uh, and even perhaps the payments might be uh, delayed because they're currently, uh, it says here they're negotiating uh, on what that agreement looks like. Yeah, that won't affect us uh, here because we have some carry forwards with this fund anyways. Uh, so uh, we are using some in the capital budget this year, but we have plenty in carry forward that we can use. And, and uh, so we're not, that doesn't put us in a pinch at all. Take it for information. Number three, correspondence. Alberta Municipal Affairs. Meeting request with Mr. MacGyver. 
So councils, uh, municipal councils normally get uh, invitations um, from different various uh, ministries right around this time of year to meet with the ministers at the yearly conferences, uh, Alberta Municipalities Conference. And so this one is for municipal affairs. Uh, they've highlighted that uh, if you uh, want to discuss any item uh, with the minister, you can have 15 minutes uh, during the convention, which is September 25th to 27th. Uh, they have asked that you uh, identify up to three topics of discussion. Those municipalities that identify three topics and provide briefing notes are more likely to get, um, get an audience with the minister. Uh, in the past, council has discussed code of conduct um, last year, council requested to discuss um, municipal infrastructure funding. Um, and I think previously, council has talked to other ministries, uh, transportation, for example, about uh, traffic on Highway 2, uh, traffic concerns and stuff. So um, if there are some items, uh, we can definitely uh, request a meeting, council, and uh, prepare some briefing notes. Ideas, thoughts? Anybody want to meet with Minister MacGyver? Not during business hours. <laughs> <coughs> I take that as a no. Okay. <coughs> Moving on. Correspondence. Alberta Municipality CEO Dan Rood's retirement. Abe? Yeah, just an announcement from Alberta Municipalities, which is uh, the advocacy group uh, for the town of Clare's home and uh, much of Alberta, much of the municipalities uh, in Alberta. They are the advocating group and their CEO is retiring after 20 years of service. So it's fairly, I guess, a fairly high profile position uh, that a lot of different councillors know know about and know uh, know who he is, and so I guess that's why they're issuing that that correspondence. Looks like they are recruiting, uh, looking to have his replacement uh, by the first of uh, 2025. Thank you. Number five correspondence: Alberta municipalities, Alberta Day 2024. A. So the province has established September 1st as Alberta Day, uh, which is a chance to celebrate who uh, we are as Albertans and what we can achieve together. Um, there is a uh, funding or a grant, grant stream available uh, to municipalities who are looking to celebrate that day. Uh, they can uh, submit, uh, we would fall in the middle group there, 1,000 to 20,000 people and we'd be eligible for up to uh, $5,000 uh, in funding towards a uh, celebration uh, of Alberta Day. Uh, we did uh, float this by staff, um, pretty quick turnaround after our fair days. Um, and so uh, I think this year they felt fairly um, like there'd be lots to do leading up to that point, so uh, passed on it. Um, but I think in the future, circulating it to kind of community groups and the town assisting uh, could could be something that we would we would uh, consider supporting administratively. Of course, uh, if council wants to push for something, we can we can make that happen too. I just give you um, administration's perspective, I guess. Thoughts and ideas. I just see the expiration date was June twenty four. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess we're not interested this year, but possibly next year. It takes weeks to recover from fair days. Anyhow. Does it? <laughs> yes. Okay, number six, correspondence, Town of Coldale, invitation to opening ceremonies, July 3rd, 2024. Abe? So this is an invitation to the opening ceremonies of Southern Alberta Summer Games. Uh, that's, as you said, Mayor, July, uh, Wednesday, July 3rd, 2024. Um, that's a yearly 
summer games or Southern Alberta summer games are a yearly uh, event. I, not since COVID, mind you. Um, uh, they've kind of done it, uh, kind of uh, spread them out. I think they did it once or twice since COVID and spread it out through multiple communities. I could be wrong on that, but they've definitely had some problems getting that going again after COVID. Um, but I'm not sure if council has, uh, or Green, do you, have they had it? What's your recollection of that? Um, so last year they did do um, kind of a truncated version. They had a swim meet and stuff, which um, the Summer Games Committee did support. But it takes a lot of planning, and so this is the first time that they've really gotten the community together enough to, to put one on. Since COVID? Since COVID, since 2019, the last time. Anyone interested in going? I'll go. Thank you, Mayor. Can you reply, Kareem? Thank you. Moving on, number seven correspondence, Town of Colhurst. <coughs> Annual Miners Day Parade, Saturday, July 27th. Abe? So we have an invitation to the Miners Day Parade in Colhurst um, on July 27th. We have previously set, Council had previously set the, um, the fair parade routes uh, for this year. Colhurst uh, wasn't on that list, uh, but they could be incorporated uh, into that if Council's interest in sending the float. Anybody interested? We actually have both of these next two parades covered for the float, if you guys want to send it. Well, there's a driver? Mm -hmm. Nice. Send away. Yeah. Perfect. So that's both Colhurst and Carmen Gay? Correct. Right on. I just need motions for both because this is outside of what you already agreed to. Okay. I'll make the first one. Councillor Meister, question. Moved by Councillor Meister to send the town of Clarsome Float to the Miners Day Parade in Coalhurst on Saturday, July 27, 2024. All in favor? Approved. Opposed? Motion to go to Carmen Gay. Councillor Cutler. Question. Moved by Councillor Cutler to send the town of Clarsome Float to the annual Sports Day Parade in Carmen Gay on Saturday, August 3rd, 2024. All in favor? Approved. Opposed. Opposed. Correspondence. Clarsome. Area Palliative Care Committee, Christmas cruise drive through light display. display. Ape. So the Palliative Care Committee uh, has, I think, for three, two or three years now, done a Christmas uh, drive through light display uh, fundraiser, uh, and uh, they are requesting to do that again this year, and have a request for council uh, to to approve that. I know it's been a, a good, good fundraiser uh, for the community, and administratively, we're happy to uh, to assist them with that. Questions, concerns? No, oh, but I'll make the motion. Councillor Carlson, question. Moved by Councillor Carlson to allow the Clarsome Area Palliative Care Committee to use Centennial Park Campground for a Christmas light display as a fundraiser to allow them to use a town's power supply for their display and to ensure that the roads are clear of snow for their event to be held in December 2024. All in favor? Opposed? Request for decision, letter of support, Clarison Golf Club. Abe? Yeah, sorry. 
Okay, uh, so the bridges at Claire's Home Golf Club is applying for the Community Facility Enhancement Program. Uh, they are looking to do some upgrades on their irrigation. Uh, they have applied in the past. Uh, it's not the first time Council's had a request for this uh, funding stream and for this work. Uh, they did apply in 2022, uh, weren't successful. Um, and they are going to, uh, looking to apply again in 2024. I make uh, the motion to. Okay. Any other questions, concerns? Councillor Ross, this is a question. Moved by Councillor Ross to write a letter of support towards the Bridges at Clarestone Golf Club's application to the Community Facility Enhancement Grant for the purpose of replacement of the irrigation system on the original nine holes of the golf course. All in favor? Approved. Request for decision, prize donation, fire department, golf tournament. A so the fire department is having their annual uh, tournament that is running uh, on August 17th. Uh, and they are uh, doing some fundraising to complete their uh, extraction, extraction tool purchase. If you recall last year, they uh, purchased Jaws of Life or a portion of it. This year they're looking to complete the, uh, I don't know what all equipment goes into it, but it's called a RAM. Uh, and, uh, so the RAM is a, a part of that overall toolkit, and so they're looking to do that. Um, in the past, Council has, uh, I think since I've been here, Council has done a basket and or, one year was a basket and one year was a, a sponsoring a hole, I believe. Um, there's also a request uh, to uh, enter a team as well, uh, $75 for members. Yeah, or $95 for non-members. Questions, concerns? Uh, I have a motion to, oh, whole, hey, sorry, whole sponsors are $200. Yeah. <laughs> Councillor Cutler, I'll make, I'll make a motion to donate $200. Question. Moved by Councillor Cutler to approve a cash donation of $200 to sponsor a hole at the Clarestone Fire Department's annual golf fundraiser on Saturday, August 17, 2024. All in favor? Approved. Request for decision Economic Development Strategic Plan 2024 2026. Abe? Yeah, so the Economic Development uh, Committee has been working on uh, creating a plan, a strategic plan that aligns with, aligns with uh, Council's strategic plan. They've been uh, at this work for a few months now. And at their last committee meeting, uh, their committee uh, approved uh, what was presented. Um, as you said, Mayor, uh, their strategic plan from 2024 to 2026. Um, there are, I guess, to just do a, a review here of some of the um, priorities and the focus areas uh, of the plan. Um, there are three strategic priorities within the plan. Uh, one is investment attraction and business support. Uh, second is to revitalize business centers and highway corridors. And the third is a focus on tourism uh, destination marketing and event hosting. Um, Got some core values that they've highlighted here as well, uh, Council. Uh, support for business and the residents. So the e EDC takes to heart the needs of the local businesses and residents and makes efforts uh, to ensure their health and success. They also focus on balanced growth. EDC uh, activity strives to develop ways to enhance the economy without sacrificing the elements of rural charm and quality of life that have attracted residents and businesses. Uh, relationship building and enhancement, EDC actively seeks to build relationships with business community and community members and groups and strives to communicate effectively and share information, build awareness and learn from stakeholders. Um, and lastly, uh, solution oriented. EDC strives to provide solutions instead of barriers. 
uh, making recommendations and bringing ideas to navigate policies, programs, and services that may benefit the business community. So you'll see that a lot of that um, uh, from a high level uh, view aligns with a lot of what council is, is uh, focused on for this term, economic development, um, finding solutions rather than barriers uh, to development, um, working collaboratively uh, with different groups. Uh, so uh, strategic priority number one uh, is investment attraction and business support. Um, so some of the action items that they've highlighted in there um, are workforce development. Sorry. Uh, workforce development, investigating and offering incentives, programs, initiatives to support businesses, uh, collaborating with other organizations uh, to create new opportunities. Um, so it could be local ones or regional ones, organizations. Uh, think uh, Chamber of Commerce, Alberta Southwest, Community Futures, etc. Uh, creating a one-stop shop for business to access resource, resources and incentives. Um, so really uh, striving to uh, be, create, um, provide information and solutions for people is easy, uh, easily accessible for, for businesses uh, and interested investors. Um, uh, also, they've highlighted business visitations and annual surveys. Uh, with those businesses uh, and developing strategies uh, to work with uh, landowners uh, to encourage development. Uh, so yeah, some of the objectives uh, under um, investment attraction, um, implementing and managing programs that help existing businesses expand and increase local investment. Um, business support activities uh, involve working closely with local business to identify their needs. So a lot of hands-on. Uh, this kind of goes back to the what we said previously here um, yeah, about visitations and annual surveys, actually talking with businesses and connecting, uh, seeing what the challenges are and trying to be a resource, um, trying to be a resource to them. Uh, second strategic priority is re revitalize uh, business centers and the highway corridors. Uh, so business centers and highway corridor revitalization is an ongoing effort to improve economic uh, vitality of business areas. It often involves restoring buildings, creating attractive public spaces uh, such as parks, plazas and walking trails and providing incentives to attract new businesses. Uh, so some of the action items uh, investigate business improvement incentive programs. Some of these we do actually uh, already have in place. Um, so the, the goal there would be to make sure that um, uh, for sod improvement grants, for example, make sure that the um, the program is known uh, by the business community um, and that it's um, it's up to snuff. Uh, it's comparable, yeah. and there are a number of other things in there: planning fee exemptions, development charge exemptions, uh, etc. And finally, strategic priority three, tourism, destination marketing, and event hosting. Uh, so there's a lot of focus here on actually regionalizing, uh, promoting our uh, town events regionally. We're seeing some of that work happen already uh, in the community um, with the engagement coordinator. So strengthening relationships with, uh, in, within the region and local groups to, to uh, encourage tourism, uh, to uh, actively seek out grant opportunities uh, to promote tourism and events. Um, etc. So I just wanted to provide a kind of overview of that. Uh, a lot of work's gone into this, um, mm -hmm. uh, but I'll uh, stop talking now and turn it over to Council. Sounds good. It's going in the right direction, I think. Questions, concerns? <clears throat> Do we actually have a facade improvement grant? Well, I believe that the um, the business loans would kind of work as a, a potential facade. Might not specifically be facade improvement, but the small business loans, business improvement loans would certainly work towards that. It's basically a recap of, of what we currently do. Um, it's 
as far as a strategic plan, I don't think it's very strategic, but it encompasses what we have done in the past um, and whether I'm, I'm hoping that it's a base that we can build an economic development committee off of um, and plan through administration for actual economic development, but uh, I've got challenges with it. Councillor Kettles? Uh, Abe, could I get you to scroll down just to number 13, or page 13? Mm -hmm. One more. Okay, so so they do <laughs> exist. <laughs> yeah, it's not real. <laughs> okay. Okay, good. That's uh, just email, obviously didn't come through in the translation. So when the email out, that page comes up with a bunch of dots instead of wording. Yeah, oh, okay. there's, there's a there's a font issue with it. That's all. Okay. Okay. Oh yeah. Sometimes they render really weirdly. Sorry. Well, that's fine. I'm glad to see it's there. Performance in yeah. indicators are great. Yeah. Councillor Cutler. I do believe that the Economic Development Committee is starting to take traction with the, the transition of not having an Economic Development Officer and stuff, and I do believe that it, this is a, a platform to, to get things going, so uh, they have been working hard on it yes. and uh, trying to find out which direction they're going, so reinventing what the Economic Development Committee looks like has been a challenge, but it's going in the right direction. Thank you. Can we just read through the key performance indicators, please? You want me to do that? Yes, please. Okay. Because it wasn't on the... Sure. And yep. Anybody watching is not going to be able to know okay. what it was. So the key performance indicators uh, will be land sales and real estate values, uh, number of businesses opened or attracted, uh, business-friendly impressions, number of inquiries, uh, employment sector diversity, Strategies, policies, or incentives researched and implemented. That's actually a big part. You can read that. It's in there a few, a few places. Um, development timelines, building permits, value of permits. Uh, so a lot of this stuff we, we report on. Um, our development officer reports on, on this. Uh, number of events held and number of participants and visitors uh, and unemployment rate. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So those will be items that the Economic Development Committee will be tracking. Tracking? Yeah. On a month, on a meeting basis? I don't know the reporting yeah, schedule. Quarterly. Quarterly? quarterly? Yeah. They're such high, high level numbers that uh, um, it's, it's hard to see relative change and uh, without actually getting land ready investment um, through the door uh, that has those challenges to use those indicators. Do we need a motion? We'd like a motion, I think, just for, uh, as I said, it's been accepted by the Economic Development Committee, but. Um, council just to support uh, that that plan any other concerns questions I could, I, could I have a motion, motion. councillor Ross question moved by councillor Ross to approve the economic development strategic plan 2024 2026 as presented all in favor approved Opposed? Councillor Carlson. Request for direction. Authorization to employ police officers. Uh, Eight? Yeah, peace officers. Sound like you said police officers. Well, <laughs> we can do both. So uh, there has been some chatter uh, uh, and, and concern in the community lately uh, um, about traffic safety, um, speeds on highways, um, and safety at intersections in town. Uh, we've been hearing about it administratively. We know council has heard about it uh, at Coffee with Council. And so um, 
there, uh, the topic has come up recently between council and administration uh, about uh, what it would look like to have a community peace officer. Uh, council or the town previously had um, a peace officer in place uh, and uh, prior to my time, uh, but at one point uh, had lost, uh, failed to retain uh, the peace officers and, and I think at that point um, I uh, decided to let the peace officer program go and go with a uh, bylaw officer. I don't know the, the, all the reasoning behind that decision, uh, but that was one of the challenges um, was, was retention. Uh, so uh, just a bit of a background. It's been a few years since uh, the town of Clarisome has employed a CPO. Um, however, uh, a CPO program would be able to, uh, if, if council put one in place, would be able to... Um, uh, deal with some of those traffic concerns that our residents have had um, recently and, and ongoing concerns that they have. They are able to enforce the Traffic Safety Act and those kind of moving violations like speeding um, and, and have an increased presence uh, in school zones, for example. Uh, a lot of benefits to the program, uh, providing additional support uh, to the bylaw program as well uh, would be another one. Uh, we do monitor the speeds on Highway 2, uh, north and south, and uh, we, we are seeing some uh, high speeds uh, regularly, some very high speeds coming through, and so there, there are some concerns there. Um, and, and having someone patrol that area certainly would add to a bit of safety, uh, would slow people down. Uh, there's no question about that won't solve the problem, but uh, it can uh, make a difference at different times. Um, so administratively, uh, we're just looking for direction from council to see if there's an appetite uh, to look into a, a CPO program. Uh, there are cost implications, uh, staffing implications, obviously administratively, the, the process of uh, applying for uh, a CPO um, is uh, a lengthy one and so there's a little bit of work that we'd ha have to do uh, so prior to prior to uh, bringing in RFD we uh, wanted to know if, if council has an appetite to see um, kind of cost wise and, and manpower wise and what the benefits would be uh, to, to starting that program questions concerns councillor Carlson um, I think it's worth the due diligence uh, to bring it forward to the public to what those costs would actually be. Um, my suggestion would be that the uh, peace officer uh, is a separate position from the bylaw officer uh, simply because I think that's part of the failings of the last couple of attempts to make that happen. Um, uh, it, it creates a degree of frustration with, with the, the officer in trying to get both duties done uh, and uh, yeah there's been challenges um, so yeah if we can bring the cost of starting up a program and what it would look like uh, to the taxpayer uh, I think they need to know that uh, so it's open uh, for them to see Abe and I met with the sergeant and we asked him what we could do to help. This was his suggestion. He's severely shorthanded right now and trying to deal with the crime wave we've had and the traffic has been a challenge. Any other questions, concerns? I would say no concerns, but I agree with Councillor Carlson. Like the more information we can have to present to people, maybe this will be our first uh, back to coffee with Council in September conversation. Who knows? But I think there is an appetite in the community for this, but there's also numbers that may sway some minds to the other side. So information never hurts. Looking into it. Yeah. 
Councillor Ross. Does the police officer just work in the daytime or does he work at nighttime or how does that work? It's a uh, both. Both? De deter determined by administration. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, and actually determined by council. Um, uh, but um, generally, generally, they, uh, they would be working during the day. I think that we've noted that the benefit of having uh, a second body in here, uh, if, if the positions were to say separate peace officer bylaw, uh, the bonus of having those two positions is there could be some evening coverage sometimes and some spelling off uh, for, for special things, right? Mm. But that's always open for um, uh, council's direction, those kinds of things. Any other questions? Concerns? What would we like for a motion? Councillors Carlson, question? Moved by Councillor Carlson to direct administration to investigate the potential to create a CPO program in Clareson and to report back to Council at a future meeting. All in favor? Approved. Request for direction. Authorize, or sorry, information brief. Update to fire engine delivery. They so this is an update that uh, the expected anticipated delivery date in July of the fire truck uh, will not be met. Um, they're having some uh, production issues and uh, I guess disappointing but not completely unsurprising uh, uh, that they are having some some issues and so uh, anticipating that it should be here at some point in August. Um, and the fire chief is, is looking to hold a, a push-in ceremony to co coincide with the start of Fire Prevention Week uh, the first week in October. Um, that's his thoughts at this time. And so uh, they will keep us updated um, as to the status on that. Okay. Information brief, CAO report. A so this is a monthly report from all the departments uh, and the CAO on some of the things that we've been up to. Um, let's go to the uh, corporate services report. We did get a request uh, by council to have some more breakdowns of our financial reports that um, we see on the agendas from time to time, a uh, breakdown of certain items uh, certain line items in the budget so that is forthcoming the corporate service director has has indicated that uh, the next financials we have uh, will have some breakdowns uh, for council some questions from the community uh, about having greater detail on, on some of those so. thank you information brief council committee report Thank you to Councillor Kettles and Meister. Yes. Mm -hmm. Top secret float plants. Float plants. Top secret. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> information brief council resolution status. <clears throat> hey. Yeah, any questions uh, on any of these? I, I will say that the public participation plans uh, will be rolling out this week, so just an FYI. Um, so that were the, it's the surveys on their recreation and cultural facilities and uh, the survey on council communications and town communications. So those will roll out this week. Get notices of those in our utility bills. Uh, should be something on um, town news. And we'll uh, pump that on social media as well. Those are two of the uh, ongoing or in progress uh, resolutions here. Okay. Could I have a motion to adopt the information items? 
Before we adopt the information oh. items, can I just make a request to the public to put their dog poo bags in the garbage and not in the sanny dump? <laughs> it was in their reports, that's why it was plugged. So, oh. yeah. But other than that, I will make a motion to accept them as presented. Question? Moved by Councillor Meister to adopt the information items as presented. All in favor? Approved. Motion to go in camera. Motion to go in camera. <laughs> Councillor Ross. Question. Moved by Councillor Ross to go in camera at 7.45 <coughs> p.m. for the following items. A, local public body confidences, FOIP section 23. B, C, D, and E are advice from officials, FOIP section 24. All in favor? Approved. Camera off, please. <coughs> Motion to come out of in camera, please. Wrong. Councillor Carlson, question. Moved by Councillor Carlson to come out of in camera at 8.30 p.m. All in favor? Approved. First motion, please. I'll make the motion for the other budget expense for staff training. Councillor Cutler, question. Moved by Councillor Cutler to approve the out of budget expense of $8,000 for staff training to be funded from general operating reserves. All in favor? Approved. Second motion. I'll make the motion to approve the CAO employment contract. Question. Moved by Councillor Meister to approve the CAO contract with A. Tinney effective July 27, 2024 as presented. All in favor? Approved. Motion to adjourn by Councillor Zimmer. <laughs> All, uh, question. Moved by Councillor Zimmer that this meeting adjourn at 8.31 p.m. All in favor? Approved. Thank you. Camera off.